Hi there, my name is Rick Blythe and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking to you about how to build your own MicroSaaS app in 10 steps. So this video will just be outlining the high level overview of these 10 steps and there'll be future videos on each of these steps. So if you like what you see, then please like and subscribe so you get all that good content in the future. Just so you know, I'm talking to you as someone who has traveled this road before and has done all these 10 steps for numerous MicroSaaS apps. And what started for me as a side hustle, building some apps on the side for some niche communities, uh, ended up being something that I scaled to a point that I could actually quit the day job, which was a great moment for me because I hated that day job. Um, and it's great to, to resign and focus on my apps. So I then scaled the apps up. And then after a few years, I ended up selling those apps for a life changing sum of money. So I've ended up making multiple six figures in subscription income, multiple six figures when I exited those apps as well. So hopefully you take from that that I know what I'm doing in terms of building Microsoft apps in a profitable way and starting from nothing and building them up. So let's dive into the detail. Let's have a look at how to build these apps in 10 steps or less. Now I say or less because it depends on what your target is for your Microsoft app. You know, and there's different targets that you can have. So in some cases, you might just be saying, I want to do this on the side and I want to uh, just get some beer money going. Um, and in other cases, you might say, actually, I want that to pay for my rent. That would be great. For me, it was much more about the quitting the day job sort of money. Once I tasted that beer money, the rent money and the potential of it, I was absolutely hooked and thought, brilliant. I'm going to be um, focusing on Microsoft to the point that I can quit the day job. Um, and this FU money is still a way off for me, but um, I was more than happy to make a comfortable living for a family of four. So that's what I did. But this is important as to what your targets are, what your aim and objective is, because that will dictate how far you go down these 10 steps. So you may only need the first seven or eight steps because you wouldn't be interested in, in like scaling it and and selling it ultimately. Okay, so first step out of 10 is to find a great micro niche. Now, this is absolutely critical. If you start off in a niche and you think, I'm gonna build some software in for, for this industry, and let's say that industry, that market is in decline, and people are leaving that niche, and maybe there's lots of competition in there already, or maybe it's just that there's not a lot of users with a lot of money in there, a uh, budget for sort of tools and things that you would be hoping for. Uh, this really is a critical step to get right, identifying what makes a great micro niche. And in this next, uh, well, in the detail video for that one, I'll be going into the characteristics of what makes a really good Microsoft niche to, to target. So you wanna find a great niche. And then after that, we're gonna get on to identifying problems within the niche. So infiltrating the user base, if you will, and uh, hanging out in the communities, finding out what the problems are that the people are, are experienced within that. And then the next step is fairly obvious. We're going to have a look at how can we help to solve those problems with software. So uh, we're going to start generating ideas and a ton of ideas, not just one idea. And uh, out of that list of ideas, we'll come up with a, a list of favorites. And then we want to go on to move on to the validation side of that and see if we can validate our favorite ideas as best as we can um, using some soft validation techniques. But ultimately, the only way you can truly validate your app idea is to ask people for money for it. And what we're going to do is, you guessed it, we're going to build a MVP and that MVP will be functional. Uh, it might be super ugly, it might be super basic, but it's gonna work and do what it says on the tin. Um, and we're gonna ask users for some money and that will be the proof, the proof is in the pudding. And we'll see, do those people actually really, um, you know, validate that idea? Do they really want the, the problem solving by your software? Hopefully the answer is yes. But if not, then there's no point in going all the way down these steps and finding out in a year or two years time, oh, these people weren't that bothered actually about this problem and I've wasted a ton of time. So we'll build an MVP and then before we launch it, we're going to get into building up some hype. So some pre-launch hype and the same time that you're actually building the MVP, you're going to be creating some buzz, some hype around your uh, upcoming product. 
Uh, I'll talk about that in more detail in that video. Uh, but then eventually you should then have a small, you know, but a targeted audience to launch this to. So the next step will be the launch phase. And we'll talk about how to launch a Microsoft app and what's worked for me in the past. Um, and just so you know, that's not using uh, paid ads and I've not sunk a load of money in. This has all been organic in my experience. So how to get organic growth on Microsoft apps, um, you know, from day one. Okay, and then after that, these ones would be optional if you were hanging around this area where we were looking earlier at the beer money slash rent money and you built an app and you maybe had a couple of hundred users and it was fine and just uh, covered, you know, your rent, let's say. But if you really wanted to kind of go for it and scale your app up, then there's certain things that you would need to do uh, before you found out too late, you know, when you actually hit the button and, and really scaled it up. And those things are to do with the app and the software itself, the infrastructure. So things like if it was, um, if your user base suddenly, you know, doubled or tripled, uh, would the servers that it runs on just start grinding to a halt? Is there some other bo bottlenecks within the app that would actually cause problems for you? And then also things from a business perspective as well. So how do we handle the support? Is email going to cut it anymore? Do we need to get a ticketing system, etc.? Anyway, we'll go into more detail on that in the uh, future videos. So once we've laid the foundations for scaling, we'll be able to actually scale up. I'll talk about how to do this um, using basically SaaS marketing and the ways how you can go about this. Again, you don't have to pay out a ton of money in paid ads. You can do a lot of this organically. And then this will, uh, you go in this phase, which is called the grind, where you're trying to scale up the user base and swell that subscription income. Um, and then that phase there where you're going to be adding new features, supporting existing users, onboarding more users will last a while. And in my case, what happened was after two or three years of working within the same niche, other things were uh, catching my eye, other opportunities, and I had a bit of shiny object syndrome. And I go into that into more detail in, in my sort of story video, which you can find on the channel. But you may get to a point where you think, actually want to sell these apps and focus on some other opportunities. Or you may have been building this from the start to a point where you could have you could exit. So you've been monitoring your important SaaS metrics and you've been building it to sell from day one. And if that's that's you, that's great. It may be that you're happier just down this end. But in any case, these are the 10 steps and I'll be going into detail of how I sold my apps and what the process was, what I do differently and what I learned you know, in, in those videos as well. So in addition to that, I'll also be talking about passive income on this channel. So my passion is about leveraging the time you spend as a developer at the keyboard um, for the maximum sort of income that you can earn for that hour that you put in. And I won't be talking about active income that much where you get paid per hour. So a permanent job, a, a freelancing role, something like that. These are more about generating uh, products that you can build it once, sell it multiple times and therefore leverage your time invested. I'll also be talking about quitting your day job if that's something that's of interest to you. I'll show you how to basically de-risk that in such a manner that you can walk in there confidently and hand in your resignation knowing that you've got enough income or enough saved up to be able to feed you and your family as well. And then finally, Chrome extensions. So Chrome extensions are the Microsoft apps or the form of Microsoft apps that I built and therefore I've got quite a bit of experience in them. But the same principles will apply for Microsoft if you're building a plugin or if you're building web apps or whatever. So um, it's just that mine were mainly Chrome extensions. And as such, I'm going to be talking about some of the tech side of Chrome extensions and how to, to build profitable cash flowing Chrome extensions too. So if you like all that, then please feel free to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you around.